Update 8 for Hell Let Loose is out, and it's time to blow stuff up. What's up guys, Chuck Dix here. I've been playing Hell Let Loose since the beta, before it was available on Steam. I've seen the game change a lot. Every update is big, and Update 8 is no different. So when the update dropped, I heard a lot of discussion about what was and wasn't destructible. And that's what we're gonna look at today. We got artillery and bombing runs lined up, and this is not an exhaustive list, all right? So we're just gonna be testing stuff to confirm what we heard or, you know, to remove any doubts. Now, I do a lot of this testing live on stream with my viewers and the team. You're invited. I'm live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now. Those links are below. Shout out to the folks who helped make this possible. Dr. J, FP, cool friendly guy, Gal Rocco, HD Murdoch, nickname pending, Chris, Cheese, A Theory, Cypher, and tons of others. Now let's check out the footage. Welcome to the testing grounds. Here we have three different nodes, a level one fortification, a garrison, an outpost, a repair station, an AT gun, supply crates from trucks, even the truck itself. And we hammer it with artillery. What we found was, well, the repair station is destructible. Oh, by the way, those trucks, the supply trucks, the transport trucks, they have a timer, 10 minutes. If you drive it somewhere, get out. You better get back in it within 10 minutes if you want to use it again or it will explode. Unsatisfied with our findings, we decided to just rain artillery shells all over the nodes and the fortifications. And what we find is pretty incredible. The fortifications are OP. They can protect the infantry so well. All the infantry has to do is stand next to the wall or in the corner and they're pretty well shielded. And that doesn't matter if it's a level one, two, or three fortification. It was pretty surprising. Here we have some direct hits on a level three fortification and well, there was no damage done whatsoever. You did see the human confetti there. That was possible by hitting directly in the doorway, which is incredibly difficult to do because they've made the range of artillery between 10 and 20 meters larger than the last updates. Here we have a bombing run, and the bombing run was a sight to behold. When the smoke cleared, we saw nothing, well, <laughs> except for the AT gun but we know how to take care of the AT guns. So basically bombing runs will wipe out nodes, garrisons, you know, supplies, all the things, except for an AT gun and any structures. Now we decide to line up the tanks and trucks. We're gonna put a bunch of the, the tanks and the trucks in a line. What, 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 what it, what's going? What, what, hey, hey, come on now, you went too f Hey, nobody said science was easy. Okay, these guys are rascals. It is what it is. Now, this was a lot of fun. We just decided to see what the uh, physics would, would be uh, with the trucks and, and the tanks. Well, surprisingly, the Panther flies farther than the supply trucks. And, um, well, we got a little bit of this bouncy ball action going on here with the supply trucks. They do not like to be flipped over. But anyways, what we're really focusing on is the destructibility. So we have the transport truck, the supply truck, the recon vehicle, and the light tank all lined up with a panther, a tiger, and another panther off of the wing. We start sending in artillery, and two shells was all it took for the light tank and the recon tank to explode. They went down very easily. We then continued to hammer the supply truck and the recon truck over and over and over again. I'm not even showing all the rounds. It's just super repetitive, uh, but direct hit, indirect hits, you know, it just didn't seem like they were, they're going to explode. It just did not seem like it was possible. Now the tanks on the other hand, direct hits were very much affecting their, their health. As you can see, they're on fire right now. And 
watch this shot right here. This was interesting. Uh, we had a bit of shrapnel send the tiger and the panther right off the wing. We'd love to see that in the game. Finally, a direct hit on the transport truck caused it to explode. We then moved the supply truck directly in between all the tanks where we decided to continue to hit the tanks to see if the the vicinity, the truck being in the vicinity of an exploding tank would cause any damage to the truck and you know we blew up the tiger, two panthers and the supply truck is just sitting there with a smile on its face no big deal. So then we move the truck, we back it up right right to where the carcasses of all those big pieces of hunks of steel are and we finally get a direct hit right on the hood of the supply truck and it goes down. There you have it, they can both go down to artillery. Then we line up the uh, supply truck and the transport truck. An indirect hit caused damage to the transport truck even though the round was on the side of the supply truck and then a direct hit to the transport truck finished it. So basically two rounds will destroy these trucks, but it has to be right on the hood of the truck. It can't be in the bed, it can't be next to it. I mean, that's what I thought until I saw the last clip and it looked like, you know, indirect damage was possible. I don't know. Nothing was conclusive. Would love to know what you guys found through your testing uh, in game. So please do let us know in the comments. And um, here we're going to be testing the satchel charges. We have we sped it up because it's boring, but two side-by-side -side truck supply and a transport with a satchel in the supply truck. Boom! Both trucks go down. Does this just keep getting weirder or is it me? Anyways, we've got the Tiger here. We got a satchel directly on the front. Is this going to happen in-game? Highly unlikely, but whatever. We're testing it and... One satchel charge does a significant amount of damage, but does not totally destroy the, the tiger. We then send our uh, Mr. Insano to set the satchel charge on the rear of the tiger. And you will see that two satchel charges are required to completely destroy a tiger. The proximity damage even hit the recon vehicle, which Again, was pretty surprising because I guess they can take they can take damage, but the uh, trucks can't. So here we have a satchel charge on the opposite side of the tank, right on the track. We then set uh, another satchel charge on the track again, and well, two satchel charges directly on the track will not completely destroy a panther fascinating. So we decide to set the satchel charge on the front of a fully healed panther and that happened. We thought it was hilarious. The driver was freaking out. He could see it. Everybody in game could also see it. It was it was pretty funny. When this sucker does blow up boom a body goes flying. You gotta love to see that ragdoll effect uh, so it did a lot of damage but it did not totally destroy it so mr. destructo goes and slaps another satchel charge to the rear of the panther and two satchel charges one to the front one to the rear completely kill the tanks now here we've got a line of uh, enemy and friendly supply and transport trucks with two commanders sending bombing runs over the exact position at the same time, and uh, thank God, thank God there was an explosion because that was absolutely insane. And if those trucks didn't die, I would have been shocked. But I guess more shocking was only one, sh only one died? Really? Anyways, so then we line up all the trucks and we put the satchel charges, AT mines and AP mines down and kaboom, that was the final product. All in all, that, testing period was super interesting and would love to know what you guys have found in game so let us know in the comments and we'll talk to you on the next video